Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and you are about to enjoy a brand new interview that I had with Travis Williams. And if you have been listening or watching any of the content that I've been putting out over the past couple weeks, you've heard Travis come up a lot because he is really leaning into one of the best parts about this new CrossFit game season, and that is the super teams and the ability to trash talk that comes with it. Now, Travis was on a really good team last year. They are in the top 10 at the CrossFit Games. That was team Don't Stop. This year, he and the Mystic Crews are putting together some really talented teams as well to take on a bunch of different competitions from Dubai to Wadapalooza to the Brazil CrossFit Championships. So there's going to be a lot of action coming out of Travis. And the guy is super talented and he keeps talking trash, which is like my favorite, favorite thing. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey, Travis, what's going on, man? So uh, <laughs> you're you're really causing some splashes uh, over the past few days. I feel like I've I've talked to you uh, probably every day, and every time we've been talking, it's been uh, about talking to other people about you, man. What is going on? Oh uh, man, I don't know. Uh, just getting excited for these team competitions coming up. Uh... Not getting a lot of credit from some people, you know. Uh, I think <laughs> it's a lot differently this season than a lot of people think. So, so you know, last last year uh, we saw you put together "Don't Stop," which uh, was like about as good of a super team as is possible to put together, uh, at least in the old games format. This games format is going to be a little different, but you put together "Don't Stop." You guys were very, very vocal about what you were going to be out there to do. And, and you were very clear, like, hey, we're here to dethrone, you know, Froning and Mayhem. And it didn't really go your way, but you guys did a lot of, you know, you did pretty well. How did you guys, how'd you guys do at the games? We got six. That's pretty three, good. Three out of four people. So uh, Sheila Barden, unfortunately, had a uh, herniated L5 the entire games. And was literally on the uh, table at a Rossi the entire games. Poor girl. Like, bless her heart. Like, she did awesome for what she was dealing with. But there was just some things she couldn't do. And to come out in sixth with all of that, I I think we did pretty good. About as successful as we could be. So this year, you have – you definitely aren't shying away from – from still vocalizing those those goals. And honestly, I, you we've talked about this. I think a lot of people don't necessarily see this because like they maybe they see like the podcast that I'm putting out or the interviews I'm putting out or they see sort of like the Instagram, you guys like clapping back on Instagram, but like the shit talking that is going on right now is so good for this sport. It's so it's so beneficial and it's so much more fun than the like everyone shake hands and like fist bump high five uh like after a little league baseball game that i think that is an invaluable part of this brand new season oh yeah it's awesome and i think uh you see a lot more in the team competition the individual competition too because a team competition you really don't know what's going to happen with every workout i mean in the individual competition you can look at a couple guys and say okay they're winning this workout and there's really no reason to talk shit in that because you're just going to get your ass whooped, right? <laughs> in the when you're on a team and you got three other people helping you out, I mean, yeah, my guys are going to kick your guys' ass all day. Yeah, so let's let's go ahead and rewind for a second because this this conversation I think really started back. Uh, I think on one of the first on the minute episodes we did, we uh, Justin and I were talking about the Wadapalooza teams, and I. I said that there's a 0% chance that Mayhem doesn't win. That there's going to be maybe some people who push them, but because they've been training together for as long as they have, they have a huge advantage. You saw that and you texted me immediately saying that you think your team is not only going to be better at at Wadapalooza, but that he doesn't he's going to have to have a push to take podium. Yeah, I don't. There, there's so many good teams at Wadapalooza. I don't. I, I think he's his team's third at best, like with the talent that they have. Like, um, it, team experience is it's cool, but it's really not going to help 
that much at these type of competitions. I most of the workouts are probably going to be partner workouts where two people go and do an entire thing, and then two more people go. I mean, you don't need team experience to do a partner workout. Everybody's done those at least once a week, I'm sure. And then the the worm, like, is that is what are the chances of that actually being a thing at these competitions? Like, is are people going to go buy them and is it going to, they going to show up? I don't know if Rogue's sponsoring all of these or not. And even if they are like it's sending them out, I don't know. That's a great question. And that, that is, that is a good point because I, I do agree with you there. I think, I think the, the format of these sanctional events are going to be completely different from the team formats of the games and regionals events. I mean, you're not going to see like the games events where basically every single event was a four person event in one way or another. Correct. Sure. But that's not going to be the case at these sanctioned events. Not even close. Yeah. D- Dubai just announced that our workouts are the same as the individual workouts. I don't even know how that works. How does that even work? I would imagine we're just going to relay through the entire workout as a team. <laughs> if not, maybe like two people synchronize it and then the next two people synchronize it. Like it, it, it I don't know. It, it seemed, I was a little disappointed into it. I thought they would be a little more creative with it, but it kind of makes things easy for them because they're just, you know, same judge, same standard for everything. Sure. It's still like, you know, it's kind of lame. So you, you have, you're in a really interesting position. So misfit is, uh, they have a lot of, you guys have a lot of high end athletes. You've put together a bunch of solid individual performances and a bunch of solid team performances over the past few years. But I think the, it seems like you're, you're, the, the focus has been really team-based, at least for this part of the season. And I've seen a lot of things about athletes that I would have considered individual pushes to moving into the teams. Like China's on a team with you guys uh, at Wadapalooza. And not me, but not, good not you, team, but yeah. a misfit team, yeah. right? Um, but like you, you now have a, a real focus, it seems, on the team side of things. And you're competing at both Dubai and Wadapalooza, right? Yep, and Brazil and Brazil. So, how, different team for how are you putting? How are you putting all this together? Like, how do you how do you envision this season going with all these different competitions for you? Uh, ideally, make some money at two competitions and qualify at one of them. Um, but I mean, you know, for me, it was just a pretty easy decision when they said, "Hey, after two days, we're going to cut the field to 10. And I was like, well, I think on my best day, I'm a bubble guys anyways at the game. So now I just, I mean, everyone, all the misfit people kind of decided that too. Like absolute best day at the CrossFit games, best first two days, bubble athletes, like 12th, you know, so not really worth showing up for a two day push to not and get sent home. So all of us are like, yeah, we should just make really cool, awesome teams and try and win the games. That is uh that is probably the most honest representation of where people are at that i've ever heard any any games athlete at least now because a lot of athletes are i've talked to they say the same thing they say you know there's a lot of uncertainty we don't really know no one really understands what's going to happen so we're just going to keep training the same every year what's that it's been the same every year they're crazy if they think that (laughs) And so I, that's what that's what I'm saying. I, I really like I really like that you guys you're at least honestly approaching this thing and saying, hey, listen, maybe in this new format, crushing myself to to become you know individual level is is not necessarily the smartest way of doing things. If it's just going to end my games, uh, my games competition after the first couple days. Uh, so with that sort of a shift in your mindset, how do you how do you change your training to you know, be a team athlete. You guys are all spread so far across the States and across the rest of the world. Like, how do you do that? So, I mean, like the way we trained like last summer, even when we were all together, we still did mostly individual stuff. Um, you're, I mean, even in a, when four people are working together, you're only as good as your slowest person anyway. So they need to be better as an individual so that everybody can else can go faster. Um, so it's still a lot of individual training, but uh, as far as team competition goes, it's more, it's a lot simpler, and it's a lot of uh, things where you have to go fast and rest or do a huge set and rest. Um, and 
you don't have to do the long, stupid individual things that you had to do in the past. So at the same time, that would also probably make my career last a lot longer because I'm not crushing my body near as bad, except with intensity for five to 10 minutes at a time instead of for an hour. How, uh, how pumped were you that, that you watched the individuals row that stupid marathon last year and you guys didn't have to do that. And I mean, that it was awesome not having to do it, but there were, there was a couple events that like I would have done really well at as an individual, I think. And I was a little disappointed that I didn't get to do them. Um, the row was one of them, unfortunately, because I pulled a half at a 157, I don't know, in like 2013, uh, and the winning time was a 156. And I was just like, well, whatever. The, the long, the one year, the long event would have kind of gone my way. And I wasn't there, yeah. Before, so you know, what, but yeah, I mean, no, I'm never doing a marathon row. <laughs> never. Ever. Yeah, not unless there's money on the line. That being. That everybody keeps asking me, when are you going to do your marathon row? And I'm like, I'm... <laughs> uh, do you have, uh, do you, other than Rich's team, because Rich's team is obviously, you know, they're right now, they're the, the reigning champs, right? So everyone has their eyes on them. But the between Dubai and Wadapalooza, there are some gnarly teams showing up. Like there are groups of athletes that I'm convinced never, ever talked to one another. So... How do you feel about this? What, who who do you have your eyes on? Um, for Dubai, definitely the uh, Cassie Lance, Adrian, and Jen and Lucas. They're going to be probably they should be the best team in the competition. Um, whether they can, whether they approach the workouts and attack them right or not, I don't know. Jen has a uh, team experience at the games too. I think so. I think she kind of knows what's going on, and if they listen to her, they'll be just fine. Um, the both Invictus teams, and I, and then there's one team from I think like Michigan or something that's going with uh, Joey Tatora. Uh, they'll be pretty good high end regional guys. Um, the the way I don't I don't really know what's going to happen with the way the workouts have shaken up so far. I like the workouts I see for Dubai, um, Wadapalooza. I think. Uh, the Cody Mooney, Alex Smith, Jamie Green, Jess Griffith team is pretty terrifying. Um, the other Misfit team, the China, Kenzie, Jordan, and Chandler, they have a swim event locked up. Like There's not a single team that can swim with them. And so what, and so if, if it's a six-event weekend, they have a five-event weekend already, so that's not really fair. But, uh, Paulson's team with Com Porter and the two girls, really good. I, I mean, I, anything could happen at this competition. Like Rich's team hasn't locked anything up. They got to show up and execute. And oh, for sure, absolutely. They, you know, it, it's just there's just so so many factors that come in. Like, what are the workouts like? What if it, is it going to be heavy bias? Is it light bias? Is it CrossFit biased? Is it endurance biased? I don't know. So let's let's go ahead and take a look at your. I want to I want to know about each of your teams because the composition of your Wadapalooza team is fucking bananas. But let's talk about that in a second. I want to talk about your Dubai team. Who who's on your yeah. team with Dubai? So for Dubai, I have Chandler Smith. Um, Chandler put this team together, actually, not me. Um, Chandler Smith, Taylor Williamson, and Andrea Nisler. Nisler. I, I don't know how to say her last. Sorry, Andrea. I don't know how to say her last name. Um, both girls were on the uh, third place team at uh, the games this year, right? Um, so as far as I'm concerned, we took the third place team and upgraded both of their guys, right? Like, so are we? Did that make us a first place team? Yeah, probably. So I think we're in good shape for Dubai. I want to see it happen. I, I I think I think the the beauty of this new team format is exactly what you're describing. It's this idea of like, you can take teams that were already pretty good and you can just swap out the links that weren't as good as the rest of it. So and turn them into your player. Exactly. Too. Exactly. So your, your Dubai team is essentially an upgraded version of the third place team from the games last year. Tell me about Correct. your Wadapalooza team, because the, the roster that you have is four people who I'm not sure 
everyone has even talked to one another ever before. So how does this happen? So um, Nick and I wanted to make a team for Waterpalooza. And we just started messaging every girl we could think of, every girl that had any experience with CrossFit Games or whatever, trying to make absolutely the best team on paper that we could possibly make. Um, took me a while. Uh, so I got – Turi came back pretty quickly and was extremely interested. Uh, I couldn't find a second girl for a while. I was going to use Rachel uh, Garibay from my games team, but she has a lot of trouble swimming. So I had kind of told her, I was like, hey, I need you, but if, if somebody else that swims better comes up, sorry, I got to bail on you and out. And then I had messaged Camille originally, and then I – messaged her again one day just kind of like hey whatever why not just and then she came, she got back to me i didn't expect her to get back to me but she got back to me and was like actually uh i'm not doing water palooza as an individual so and i don't know what i want to do with the season so yeah sure i'll be on your team now uh your team it's you nick your car tree hill daughter and yeah. camille obviously you and nick yeah. are you know you guys are you guys are are probably people who have had a couple conversations in the past. What I wonder is how yeah. many in-person conversations have you had with either Turi or Camille that wasn't at the games? Okay. So Camille, I've competed with at uh, three or four regionals now. So believe it or not, there's been a few, um, not, not a ton, but like, you know, we've spoken She's, I'm, I, I exist <laughs> to her I, in her world. I'm somebody. Um, she was, she wasn't, every conversation I've had with her, she wasn't bad to be around. I don't know. Some people have been like, oh my God, I can't stand that girl. But she's, she's not. I agree. Bad. She's okay. Um, there, there has been some weird conversations we've had, but that, this was like post regional workout or something that, uh, something didn't go our way and she wasn't happy and was like, okay, come on, you won the workout. Why aren't you happy? Like, but anyways, uh, Turi, I've had. <laughs> how many? Zero. Um, I may have crossed paths with her at, uh, Reebok headquarters in 2016. I still don't know if I had, a conversation with her i know she was there i don't know i don't think i talked to her um sorry if i did turi and i don't remember i apologize um the games i definitely didn't didn't talk to turi much do you do, okay so I, I think that's a that's a good point i completely blanked on the fact that uh camille has been competing in in your region so that you yeah. guys at least would have crossed paths in like the warm-up area and you know had some conversations because uh, I was, I was, re I really was struggling trying to find some sort of unifying line between between this. Yeah. I just figured you yeah. and you and Nick, I figured would be would be bros just because you guys are both really similar. Um, yeah, we we we've, we've competed on a couple teams together. The the Turi thing, does it worry you? Does it worry you that you you've never trained with her or or does it, does that even come up in your brain or or are you just like not at all? are you just so confident in what you guys have going on individually that you think you can just easily put it together without having too much trouble? I'm a, I'm a numbers kind of guy. So I mean, if, if most girls at the CrossFit games are capable of certain numbers, so I just kind of expect that. Like, obviously she's a gymnasty kind of girl. So, you know, I expect her to do lots of pull-ups and muscle-ups and stuff like that. I think she had like one of the fastest times in strict Nate ever if not the fastest time um so yeah i mean if she can do gymnastics and lift a little bit of weight not a lot of weight i think we're in good shape and obviously she has the mental game and experience of knowing how to win stuff like that so i think um i think what's refreshing about this to me is one you're super honest about your you know how you actually feel about this thing where a lot of, a lot of other athletes sometimes are just a little more like they hold their cards a little bit closer to their chest. Like they're not going to try and call their shot where Travis Williams calls his fucking shots and it's, it's wonderful. Oh yeah. Uh, but another part of it that's refreshing to me is that you're not worried about like 
what could go wrong. You're like, you're just leaning into the fact that you have a lot of really strong, talented individual athletes and that you guys know how to exercise because it's what you do professionally. So when you guys put, put yourself on the same field together, I feel like some people would look at it and think, here's what, here are the things that could go wrong. Whereas like you guys seem to be looking at it and thinking, here's everywhere it can go. Right. Let's do this. Yeah, I mean, just the the positives outweigh the negatives, like, by a ton. So, you know, it, it, there's others to it. Like, so, and if you are negative about that stuff, then how are you going to win like, in the first place? So, before before we wrap up here, I'm just curious, since you are, you know, you're really good at calling your shot. I want to hear you call your shot. Let's let's hear it. What are your predictions for Dubai and Wadapalooza? Dubai, first place. Guadalupe, first place. Brazil, first place. <laughs> we win three, three of these sanctioned events, and I'll probably hand an invite to the games to somebody. It would feel really, really good to win Guadalupe, and Rich's team got second, but still give him the invite from first place, since we're probably not going to take that team to the games. <laughs> Then I want to see him go take his team to a different competition just to win because he didn't win even though he's already got his. There invite. you go. That's that's it. That's you 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 want to uh, you want to basically hand your leftovers to Rich and, and say here you can play with this if you'd like. That's brutal. Uh, yep. You and I also that's have it. a little bit of a gentleman's wager about Wadapalooza. And uh, the wager yep. is, and we're I'm putting this out officially. We don't have anything on the line here, but the wager is that uh, I'm guessing that Rich and his team are going to do either first or second place. You're guessing fourth or worse, and third place is a push. Yep. So if we can if we third can figure out push. something to put on the line here, I, I, I think that would be that'd be a lot of fun. Maybe some sort of like charity donation or some shit. We can we can make this we can make this valuable for for people out there. But uh, we'll we'll figure Thanks. something out. Either way. I, I'm just really excited. And you're leaving, like, we're recording this. It's Saturday morning right now. You're leaving tonight to go to Dubai to compete. So this is this is all happening really quickly. Right. <laughs> That's awesome, oh, yeah. man. Well, I, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. I really appreciate you uh, you coming on and, and you know, shooting the shit with me. And, and I, I honestly love hearing you call your shots. So this, I think, is the best thing that could have happened in the team competition. I, I hope I hope that some of what you're predicting comes true. So that we can actually see some some salt being thrown around. Well, all of it's coming true, Armin. Thanks for having me, <laughs> My too, pleasure, man. Dude.